Oh, Zach. Zach, how's it going tonight, buddy? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's, it's going good, man. Uh, well, first things first, um, I got Zach from Stalemates tonight. Zach, where are you coming to me from? Uh, I live here in Des Moines, Iowa. So about the only city, Iowa City, Ames, and then Des Moines. So we're Moines. at the 2013 NCAA championships. I believe it was at Hy-Vee Center at in Des Moines. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, actually, that was my first NCAA championships I've ever been to, and I've been to every single one since. Nice. Yeah, I was there with my wife, and we rode out and rode back with and stayed with Kevin Kilgore. Uh, okay. Dustin's dad. Dust, yeah, yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. It was awesome, actually, because I just want to be a dad like that. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, Do you remember where you stayed? Did you stay downtown? No, we got, we got uh, punted out. We, we booked our um, – because the, there's a media hotel. Yeah. The media hotel, actually, I'd have to ask, like, Bader, uh, Andy Hamilton or someone, whoever, whoever got the downtown ones. It might – the hotel was hooked to the hy I believe. Yeah, probably. And then it was that way in Omaha. It was – oh, man, I got a really good hotel in uh, St. Louis 2012. And then Madison Square Garden, we stayed directly across the street. At so the did I. Um, I stayed at the Pennsylvania, too, oh, that year. God. God. That was terrible. It, the worst. <laughs> the worst the hotel. Worst. Our yeah. brother Bird and his wife had a room, and um, it was super nice. Somebody actually left them some, um, some – uh, uh, prophylactics in the room okay and they had to actually the they said hey can you come clean these up and they brought my sister-in-law a pair of gloves to put on oh wow yeah so it was top notch right <laughs> yeah top notch that's a big apple and then my brother chad was there with his family and he ordered a or no he just got a handicap room mm -hmm. and it was five ten times the size of my room wow. and you get this like massive room i was like dude how did this happen and uh i think i stayed there another time with mark bader for like beat the streets oh actually no i stayed there with with your boy sion sion yeah. at the uh at the beat the streets in 2014 wow it was uh it was it was a treasured time i'm not gonna lie to you zach but i okay. just remember the beds being super yeah they were little they were They're like tiny. little little tiny beds right they were like yeah. they're like two twin beds yeah it was like yeah and then i i stayed there uh i actually shared a room at 2016 with my uh college roommate joe charlton guy russell with but it was like the pennsylvania is it is not a five-star hotel i'm, I'm you, just you that way you know my favorite ncaa was oklahoma city yeah we need to go back up with me do you know who I, who I shared a hotel with in oklahoma city who Jesse John Castilla. Castilla. <laughs> yeah, that's we, awesome. It's, it's Castilla. I know that, but yeah. Sometimes we like to we like to get the pronunciation. You know, the 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 respect it needs. I still don't even know how to say it. It's. it's I mean, you can say Castilla, right? Castilla is like how the, I think the Mexican side says it, and yes. I grew up saying Castilla. Yeah, <laughs> Just like yeah. the widest way to say it. He Jesse shared a hotel with my dad and I. Okay. And my dad was singing to all the chambermaids. It was I still have a video of it. It was it was quite epic. That was the probably the nicest weather I think we've got for NCAA's because it was the yeah. most south we've ever been. Yes, and we like walked it back and forth every day. And I think Jesse might have been geez, I can't think. I have to ask him. But that was the year my nephew Ian, that was his first year he was on All American. Yeah, he yeah, he took fourth that year. So Oh, yeah, 2014. It good, and it was good. And it, like you said, the weather was really agreeable, you know? Um, but um, so that, is that, so has that been your favorite venue or just the weather? What, what was your, what's been your favorite NCAAs? Venue had to be the garden, Madison Square Garden, but I the mean, weather, yeah. You beat City, it, right? Yeah, you can't beat it. The only thing I didn't like about New York City was Division Ones. It feels like wrestling fans take over a city. And as soon as you leave the arena, you know, you see the Penn State fans, you see the, the Cornell fans, the, the Hawkeye fans. But at Madison Square Garden, as soon as you left, it was just another day. Like, nothing was different. It was just another day in the world. 
And so it kind of took away that, that, you know, that aspect of it. So I didn't, I didn't like that, but I thought Madison Square Garden was, was awesome. Yeah, because, like, even if you look at Pittsburgh last year and Cleveland the year before, you know, that was like – they even had the uh, St. Patrick's Day parade in uh, Cleveland yeah. in 2018. Yeah. It was still, like, overwhelmingly, like, this culture of wrestling, like you're saying. No matter and where I, you I did notice the same thing about, uh, uh, about New York City. That's actually a really astute observation on your part. Like, that totally – and, and everybody felt that, I guarantee. You know yeah, I mean? Even, like, the restaurant – like, I think my mom and I ate at, a, like, a TGA Friday's, like, right outside of Madison Square Garden. And even there, like, usually the restaurants around the arena are full of wrestling fans. That was just, like, normal people. It wasn't even wrestling fans. Like, you know. Yeah, it was we hard. did sushi hard. in uh, Times Square, and it was just – regular people it wasn't like a bunch of knuckle dragon mouth breathers with cauliflower right. and that's a that's like my favorite part of division ones is you know just it's like but a, a fan of, that. of all these different fan bases and how they and how they act and whatnot yeah it's awesome i like the culture of it and it's like you're bringing it's like it's like a corny 80s movie right like you got <laughs> these people all the people with the cowboy hats on yeah. and you got, yeah. all, you got all the california people right yeah. you got the new york people and it's it's like a corny 80s movie right it's like yeah got all these factions of people and they're super stereotypical we always get set and like random i get my tickets through somebody that works for the ncaa and uh his tickets are really good but you never know what fan base you're going to be in and like the new york city or we're in the lehigh section and it was like you know golf claps and sweater vests <laughs> and then like one year we were at the south dakota state people and they're just like midwesterners that are like super rowdy and uh that's also like another fun thing, you know? No. Yeah. It's like literally super stereotypical, like no doubt about it. And that, that's what I love about it, man. It's like Rutgers. Yeah. Rutgers. They were that fan that's that face in 2019, man. They got, they got a treat. They're like the East coast Hawkeyes. I love it. Yeah. It was awesome. And then, you know, Scott Goodale, that guy, what an awesome guy. He is just, I'm a big fan of that guy. He's done this show. Yeah. He's on the show with me. Yeah, he's awesome. And I'm always like yelling New Jersey at him and stuff. Boom. Hashtag yeah. boom. Yeah. Yeah. All that stuff. All of it. New Jersey. Yeah. That one's a lot. He laughs. That's how we begin and start the show with, with Goodell. But um, so tell me here. I want to know about a COVID project that you had. Tell yeah. me about your COVID project you had and where we got to some of the best analyzation videos in all of wrestling Twitter with stalemates. Tell me about your, your COVID project. So I'm actually a barber full time and we got shut down for like two months. We didn't know how long it was going to be. And coincidentally, before we got shut down, I had bought like a bunch of podcasting gear just because I wanted to try it. And, uh, I just, I would call up a couple friends that like, like wrestling and stuff. And so we would have these, we would do these interviews, but we actually recorded like four or five, just like typical podcasts that like anybody would do. And I never released them. Cause I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't think they're any good. And I said, we got to find like our lane in wrestling. And I remember like just having an idea one day that I originally wanted to have like a show, like, do you know, like the soup on E with the, uh, um, Joel McHale. I don't yeah. know. He gives like jokes John on like Hansen. Josh Hanson or John Hanson. I think it was, well, he did like, pop culture you know like just like stuff that happened in pop culture and then he would crack jokes about it almost like a monologue like a jimmy fallon monologue or something yeah and i was like nobody's really doing like stuff that happens in wrestling that's not just wrestling so i wanted to do that and then it just so happened this summer for twitter has been off the chains the twitter streets have been and so i just said you know what i'm gonna do like a full breakdown of like this guy said this this guy said that and like i'm gonna you know put funny edits and jokes and then uh, next thing you know, it just kind of caught some traction. So you're, you're in this space that, like, nobody in wrestling is really doing what you're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. What I mean, I was, like, a big – I'm a big wrestling consumer. You know, I love, I love wrestling. And I just remember, like, there wasn't – there was – I felt like there was a lot of people who didn't really want to, like, step on people's toes. They didn't want to say this because then that would lead to them maybe not getting, like, an exclusive or, you know, make somebody mad. And me, nobody knows who I am. So I just said, I don't care if, people, if I make somebody mad because they don't even know who I am. And so I saw this space, this kind of lane that I was like, this is stuff as a fan I would be interested in. 
So I'm just going to start doing it. So I had the podcasting stuff and I had uh, cameras and I just said, let's just see what happens. You know, it's interesting that you make that point because Willie Saylor's done like some shows on that before. Like if you say something about Ohio State, Iowa, Rutgers, whatever the program, right? Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, you don't get access to that program. Yeah, he's talked about that in, in yeah. uh, like some FRL episodes. And I, and I, as a fan, you don't really know that. And so when he said that, I was like, oh, dang. I was like, so what if somebody like me did it? Because I don't care. Like, I'm not, I'm not breaking news or anything like that. So, I, you know, I'm an outsider, I guess. Well, that's what's beautiful about it. I like your, your – you just – you don't care. You don't care. You're going to say what you're going to say. And, you know, if uh, – if Tony Roby don't want to talk to you or Kevin Dresser don't want to talk to you, um, then so be it because you're, you're going to continue to move on. You're going to continue to create, you know, create and produce the, the content you are, man. The edits are great. Yeah. The edits are great. The music, the edits, all of it's great. I'm like talking to Joe Williamson about it today. And Joe and I are, he's just like, dude, that guy's got talent. He's yeah. like, he's like, I love watching those videos and those breakdowns. Um, how many videos have you put out so far? And what is the YouTube channel actually called, Zach? Uh, the YouTube channel is called Stalemates. I don't actually know how many videos we put out so far. We started in April and I've done like at least one a week. Sometimes I've done two a week, but um, it hasn't been that. It may be under, under 20 to 30 videos, something like that. It, you've got a ton of traction though, man, because I yeah. told you I didn't do anything with my YouTube channel because everything I had was just going on to flow yeah. for you know, almost a decade. And I was sitting at four, three, four, or 500 um, subscribers. How many subscribers do you have right now in, uh, you know, September 2020? We have, we're closing in on 500. I think, I think uh, this past week with the Willie stuff, it's really blown up. We, I, I check it all the time. I don't know how I know. So I'll tell you, 478, 478. We want to hit 500 soon. So subscribe if you haven't. Yeah, I, I did today. Did you see yeah. that? Yep. I, yeah, I hit the subscribe button today and I, 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 a lot of the time you don't realize it. That's the thing. People don't realize it. And realize it's it. funny. My mom's Dude. like a huge fan of, of me, her own son. Imagine that. And she's always like, you need to tell people to subscribe. Cause she watches YouTube videos all the time. She's like, they're always saying subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. So I'm, I'm trying to get better at that, but that's true. I'm the same way. I've got a bunch of channels that I watch, but you don't realize you actually didn't hit subscribe yet. Yeah. You got it. You got to mash. They're always like, people, oh, hit the subscribe. Right. They're always like mash that subscribe button. Yeah. And there's like a, a lot of different ones where, um, like YouTube, you know, YouTube, it's interesting. You're going to find out it's very, yeah. I mean, that is the best way I can put it to you. Cause when we do something like this, when I do something like this, I want to put it across all the channels, right? I want to put it on Facebook. I want to put it on YouTube. I want to put it on Twitter. I want to put it on Rockfin. I want to put it on, you know, every platform I can get it on shop Instagram highlights and let people, you know, to, to draw attention to what you're doing over at stalemates. Um, and you dove into it. Like, I like how you dove into it and you're really good at, um, you're a good videographer, you, you know, and you do obviously the edits that you do with stuff. I just, I'm not an editor, man. This is not yeah. my, it's not yeah. my deal. Like it's a lot of patience. It's a yeah. lot of patience. I don't think people realize how much time it, it takes to do like one video. Like people are always want me, where's the video? Where's the video? Anytime there's like a beef or, or the Willie trials, like, where's the video? When's it dropping? I'm like, dude, this thing takes like, like eight hours. It's funny. One time I uploaded uh, like a picture of my screen and somebody had commented, like, look at how many cuts. Like he was actually a videographer guy. He's like, that's a ton of cuts. That must've took you a bunch of time. I was like, thank you for finally recognizing that. A ton of time. Yeah. A ton of time. And like I told you, I just run and gun. Yeah. We're just two totally different spaces that you and I are in. Right. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I, I just respect what you do and I like it, but, um, being an outsider and jumping right into it. I love how you committed with the gear. How much gear did you have made and how can I get gear? I don't uh, hold on. Yeah. I know how I can get gear. Yeah. How can the layman get gear? How can the regular wrestling fan get gear from stalemates? Uh, so we have our website, www.stanleyshow.com and, uh, there's a link on there to the merch. Um, but we ordered like, I mean, I go all in no matter like what I do, like my fiance makes fun of me. Cause I get these new hobbies and next thing you know, I'm the biggest, uh, fan of whatever that hobby is. And so whatever, like this is what I'm doing. And, and I'm just, you know, I go full heads in. We bought, I don't even know a lot of merch. We need to start, <laughs> we need to start selling it, you know? 
but I can get you got hats. Yeah, hats, bucket shirt. hats. We have two different shirt designs. We're actually gonna have a whole um, another drop right this fall. So we're working on that right now. Jesus, peace. Yeah, that's commitment, my friend. Yeah, that's commitment. Um, you know, background in wrestling. You know, yeah. Yeah. high school wrestling, junior high wrestling, didn't wrestle college wrestling what's your background in wrestling you know that's the big question everyone always wants to know what everybody's background in wrestling is right where it's like yeah stuff, a washed up d1 guy who had a 500 record right yeah above 500 record what what zach what's your background with wrestling um so i've wrestled since second grade off and on and then i did wrestle throughout high school or junior high and high school uh wasn't ever good enough to go to college wrestle. Actually, I like, I was a type of type of wrestler that I literally would count down how many practices till the end of the year. Cause I freaking like hated it. Like it was miserable, you know, but I like to win. I just like, I, I just was a better, more of a fan than I ever was a wrestler, but I, I don't know. I made it my senior year. I had like 30 wins. I was like 30 and 12 or something. That was, that was the pinnacle of my wrestling career. So after, you know, looking back on it or you're like, man, I, I really did love that. I really, I really I did. did. And yeah, I and I, I'm really sad that I took it for granted. A hundred percent. You know, it was weird because I hated, I hated it. But like, I remember, um, like, I'm not really a crier, but I remember after I lost my last like match, if I would have won, I would have went to state. I remember like crying in the locker room and just being like, "Why am I crying? I freaking hated that sport. You know, I hated it." But I remember just like crying, like, "Man, it's over. It. You know, you'll never get it back." And like looking back on it, you always think, "Man, I would have done this and this and that." But I don't know if I would have. You know, what were you like a one hundred six, one thirteen, one twenty? What year? Because you don't look like a big dude. I was one hundred six. Actually, my freshman year of high school, I remember um, they had a, a meeting to like if you wanted to sign up for wrestling. And I remember walking in. I weighed eighty nine pounds my freshman year, and I remember walking in, and my high school coach was like, he turned to the assistant coach. He goes, "Well, our, there's our career, there's our career one hundred three pounder," and I and I was, uh, I wrestled a little bit of one thirteen, but one hundred six pretty much, and I was like five five I'm like five ten, so I was like five ten wrestling one hundred six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's oh my god dude it's crazy yeah well, it's like it's wild because you and i do come from wrestling families dude you yeah know what i mean like you come from a wrestling family um mm -hmm. i know that your uncles wrestled and yep. your cousins are wrestled and then you it's it's ironic because i'm from northwest ohio and your family's from northwest ohio right yeah yeah and your mom that's, tight yeah yeah that's crazy that's crazy and um the castellas i think I want to say Ray went to – Ray Castell went to Genoa. I know Jesse went to Stritch. Stritch was really good at wrestling, and that's where all the Bergmans went. All, our wrestling coaches at Oak Harbor, where I'm from, Yeah, the Bergmans, like J.D. Bergman's dad was a state champ at Cardinal Stritch. When mm. Ray – I think when Ray or Jesse, one of them was on the Stritch team, they won the state tournament at, in, in Ohio in Division III. Mm. So, so, like, well, no, that was Division Two. Stritch. Okay. Cardinal, it's Oregon Cardinal Stretch because you said you had family in Oregon. Oregon. Yeah, yep. Clay yeah, High yeah. School, I think. Yeah, my mom and dad are Clay grads. Yeah. And my cousin still has like either the pins or the wins record. My cousin Buck Miller at Clay. They actually have a, a Division One guy right now. Well, Stencil. Yeah. Stencil, and then their first state champion, Scrap Talk, is at Tiffin. Okay. Yeah, I mean it is, and then they're gonna have. They're gonna. They got the Jacob Moon. He's one of the top guys at uh, one thirteen, one twenty in the country. He just transferred out of Clay to Perrysburg. So we actually, we almost moved there one time. My dad, uh, like, actually, like, took a job at BP and then ended up turning it down before he started. Ray, your uncle works at BP. Yep, but we almost moved there when my grandpa was getting older in age to take care of him, and uh, we went and visited the schools and everything, and then we stayed in Iowa. I'm just gonna tell you something. Yeah, they don't make them better than Ray Castellia and Justin yeah. Castellia. Yeah, they don't make them better than those people. Like I've never, those folks are just good people, man. They're good, like friends of my family for you know going on forty plus years now, and I just I can't say a bad thing about those people. They're awesome. They got your Uncle back, Ray. Uncle Ray. Oh, uh, Ray Castellia, man. Um, what are his sons' names? Yeah, uh, Bryce, Jordan, and Ryan. Who lived with Felipe? Um, I don't know if they live together, but Bryce and Felipe are friends. Bryce played they baseball. Live they live together. 
Okay, so then it was probably Bryce. Yeah, it was probably Bryce. Yeah, they lived together, actually. And then Ryan wrestled for Oregon. Um, for Clay. Yeah, or for Clay. Okay, they just call it Clay. Like, if you call it Oregon Clay, it shows you that you don't know that. I'm just kidding. I don't know, yeah. Yeah, because Ray lives right on the border of East Toledo and Oregon. Okay. Like, right on the border. Sure. Like, they could have gone to uh, Mark Kerr Smashing Machine, uh, Toledo Weight. Like, if they lived a block or two over. Huh. Yeah, Mark uh-huh. Kerr, because Mark Kerr. You know, Mark Kerr's originally from Iowa. Did you know that? No. Nope. And they moved to East Toledo, and he went to Weight. Mm. Fun fact, my brother Ferd and him had this rivalry in high school, and my brother Ferd beat him at the Perrysburg tournament in the finals. And that would be Ian, Ian Miller's dad? Yeah, for, yeah, my brother. Okay. For, he's a real happy, real happy, uh, jovial guy. Mm. He's not. He's not at all. But that, <laughs> that who's, that's who's friends with your uncle and Justin. Okay. For, yep. That's the whole connection with our families. And I think they went to middle school at, at uh, Genoa Junior High together. I think that's like the whole intermingling and the connection between Castellas and Miller's. Well, it's funny when I started doing this, I remember Ray was like, I could get you hooked up with Zeb Miller. And I was like, okay, okay. Which like, when you start doing stuff like this, everybody knows like, Oh, I'll I'll hook you up with this guy. I hook you up with this guy. And I, I don't really like to like reach out, you know, unless I really want it, you know? And, uh, I remember he's like, I can hook you up with him. And I was like, okay, well like, like, let me, like I had like at the time I had like 20 followers. So I'm not going to have you, you know, hook me up with something at 20 followers. And then eventually, at one of the weeks, I don't know when you decided to follow us, um, but you'd followed us back, and I was like, "Yes, you well, know." I reached out to you, huh? I reached out to you. Yeah, but I but like I, the, I reached out to you. It wasn't the other way around. Yeah, because I I was like, "Hey, you should try and do a Rockfin channel," and you're like, "Okay." I bought a bunch of gear. I'm on YouTube. <laughs> I think I'm gonna just stick with what I got right now. Yeah. I, it's, but you know what, was what the first time you saw us come across your timeline or stuff like that was it a meme or a satire headline or a satire thing because you guys do a thing like the the, the onion times yeah yeah they're like yeah. ridiculous they're really, yeah and i like laugh it was something that came across and then i was like who is this guy doing these videos with the super clean studio the video is real sharp the audio is real good i'm like this is in the studio yeah yeah like i told you i'm a runner and a gunner i'm in i'm in my like uh you know there's like there's the aerodyne i'm just hanging out in the back room right yeah right like i i don't really have i just yeah it's just not it's just different you know yeah it's not super important. i i need all the help not really not really because here's why i here's why i had to have this is why I had to have what I have because you, you've got the catalog, you've got the experience, you have everything that I don't have. And so how many people do you know that have, and this is not a diss to every, anybody that's watching, but how many people do you know have their own podcast and they do zoom with, and it's just a zoom recording, right? Everybody, right? The difference is what you can do it because you have the, you have the catalog, the experience, you, your name has weight in wrestling. I don't have any of that. Right. And so I have to have the clean camera and the good editing. So that way, when people do scroll across it, they'll stop and say, wait, that, what is this? Because if it was just another zoom recording, they don't know who I am. So they're just going to keep scrolling where you, you actually, you don't need any of that. I need to have this. It would be nice. Let's just put it that way. It's just not high on my priority list. No, you don't have to have it is what I'm saying. It's like you already – people know Zeb Miller. They don't know Zach. Okay. So, so when we're looking at stalemates. Yeah. You started this as a COVID hobby thing. You jumped all in. What, yeah. is, your, what is your vision for it? What is, where are we going with stalemates in the next two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve 10, 12 months? Um, give me as detailed as you want to be yeah i mean yeah i'm not going to be super detailed because i have some stuff i want to uh, keep up my sleeve a little bit but we uh i want to have like content that that i would as a fan that i would like to see and like 
I will be the first to tell you, I will never be a guy that's going to teach you the breakdown of a low misdirection single or something like that. You know, I'm not going to be able to watch a Yanni Diakama Hollis and, and show you every little technique that he did and why he did it. So I'm coming into this as a fan of the sport and I'm just going to stick to that. And so we want to do content that's kind of not being done in wrestling, like super high produced, like professional grade and make people laugh. You know, that's the most important thing. You know, I, I'm not doing this to make anybody mad. I'm doing this to make people laugh. So. Okay. You keep saying we, do you have a mouse in your pocket? Sorry. Yeah. So I have a, a business partner that we, um, he runs a lot of the behind the camera stuff. He's been on the show a couple of times, but he does our website and then he does all of our artwork. And then uh, he lives in Boulder, Colorado. So he can't be here on the show quite a bit, um, but we'll do like, we'll do like a show once in a while. Who, but he does the tech stuff kind of. He did all the Simpsons font. The Sim Simpsons font. I'm glad you recognize that. Um, not that not that it's not obvious but he does like the graphic design stuff so if i need anything he'll do it and then our website he actually like runs the entire website got it yeah yeah i gotta go check out some of the stuff i watched you in the uh who's the twitter guy that like breaks minio. All the pat minio yeah yeah, yeah. How, how do you say uh, it again? Pat. pat minio minio yep you were wearing your shirt yep you must have just got it that day in the mail. I just got it literally like that day in the mail. Broke it out, strapped it on. Yeah. Did the I was trying to, I try to wear stuff that might, if I have something that's going to like uh, throw the, the interviewer off, I'll wear it. And so, um, or the interviewee off, I'll wear it. So like I had Jennifer Cat on, she goes by the Joker. And so I wore a Batman shirt. So I try to do stuff like that. Yeah, you're so well planned out and well thought out. I'm just not that. I'm just a runner and a gunner. Yeah. Like <laughs> I said, I, I need it. I need the, I need any of the help I can get. Well, you know, when you look at it at first, I, people have noticed that you have some talent though, and you're gaining momentum, right? Mm. Um, where, you know, okay. So as far as let's, let's say follower count, where do you want to be when we're talking a year from now with the YouTube channel, what's, what's the goal for the YouTube channel as far as subscribers, where you want to be, how many videos you want to be putting out? Where would you say well, like, that's something where that that's not a secret. That's a goal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whenever, I mean, I'll tell you stuff too. It's, it's not like I'm trying to keep everything secret, but, uh, but uh, my goal when I first started in April was 10,000 subs in one year. Right. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. There's a guy, um, shout out to this, um, another channel on wrestling, uh, his name's Fanco. He's got like 10,000 subs. I think he's got like 12,000 subs right now. And he puts out a lot of content and he does a really good job, you know, breaking down like, um, upcoming stuff and stuff that just happened. He doesn't really do stuff that I'm doing, but he's got like 12,000 subs. So for me, I look at people like him and I'm like, that's where I need to be. So. Where is your, what's your favorite beef? Court case, drama. That I've covered? Yes. What's your favorite thing that you've put out? Like, dude, it's all really funny. I love watching it. It's, like, hilarious to watch. Um, I, watch both, I watch both recaps of Willie's trial. Okay. So, it's kind of corny. I always say my last video is my favorite. But I've done I, – the first one that kind of put me on some people's radar was the – first Twitter breakdown I did, which was between Christian Piles and Pat Mineo. And uh, that was like the first one that I did. I was like, I think I could do a video breaking down this Twitter beef or whatever. And I didn't know Pat Mineo at all. I still don't know Christian Piles at all. I made when this. Was that? When was that? That was when Christian Piles put out like this eight minute uh, video talking about Pat, Pat Mineo on uh, Instagram. And it was about, what was it about? I don't even remember. That's how stupid this stuff is. Oh, what was it about? I can't even remember what they're... Oh, it was about Mark Perry and the girls at Iowa. April, May. It was about the, the Mark Perry when he was leaving and Thomas he Gilman. Was leaving. And then the girls got no yes. more funding. And yeah. So it was about that. They had a Twitter back and forth on that. And I made a video. And no... Dude, I'm telling you, man. I had like no followers, no subscribers, nothing. And I just... And I made the video and I tagged Pat Minio and I tagged Christian Piles. Christian Piles didn't respond at all. He didn't DM me. He didn't whatever. Pat Minio 
retweeted it, liked it, shared it, put it in the wrestling room, which he actually didn't know I was a member of the wrestling room on Facebook, which is a Facebook forum on wrestling. And so all these comments are like, who the hell is this guy? Like, what, like, who is that? And I remember I just commented like an emoji, like that is me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, after that, you know, I kind of got in with those guys. And then from there, like it just kind of trickled in. And then the week of the Pat Downey, um, versus the USA women's wrestling team and that whole drama thing, that's when things really picked up. Yeah, business picked up, right? Yeah. Business that was up. wild. Um, man, that, they, they got rid of him off of Team USA. Yeah. Spent it. I don't think he can wrestle in the Olympic trials. He's got to like a re- reapply for his membership. What's funny is I, I made a meme about him, about Pat Downey, and uh, like that's another thing that we do with Twitter is like I'll make these stupid memes. And I made a meme about Pat Downey, and I didn't know how he would like it or not because this thing got literally like 30,000 views on Twitter. It, it, it took off. It was I put Pat Downey's name on training day. Uh, that scene at the end of training day when Denzel's in the middle and he's like, everybody's, you know, standing around him, like turning their back on him and he's in the middle. Like, you can't I'm the kill police. That yeah. One. Yeah. King Kong and, ain't got that on me, right? Yeah, that exact one. And so he actually, he DM'd me privately and was like, send me that video. And I was like, the meme? He's like, yeah. And he, and he I didn't know what he was going to do with it. I, I emailed it to him. And then he uh, he loved it. He posted it all over everything. And here I was nervous, like this guy's gonna. Hey, you come gotta at me. watch. You listen. Yeah. Here's what I told you my favorite thing about all this when I do the media stuff, when I go and do all the interviews and stuff at NCAs and wherever else, and Olympic trials and you name it, right? Everything I've done, I like being present. Yeah. I like being in front of that person. Yeah. Whereas I don't think Pat Minio wants to be present with. Pat down. Right. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, but my thing is I, I enjoy being present with the guys and I mean the closest it's ever come to like, uh, have you ever seen the Mako video? Uh, no. He didn't take his effing shoes off. No. Yeah. He told me at the 2012 Olympic trials, I asked him if he was retired. Yeah. And, uh, but he was cool. You know what I mean? He wasn't like, but he was just in the heat of the moment. He just wrestled his last match ever. He won for third place, I believe, in in Iowa City in 2012. And he was like, yeah, I didn't take my effing shoes off, did I? <laughs> but that's well, got to be good for you, though, because you, you get the sound bite in the clip that's going to go viral, right? Uh, I don't really care about that. I care about, like, I, get, I like Steve Maka. You know, I have a ton of respect for him. Um, yeah. Yeah everybody, it turned, yeah, everybody else loves that, right? Like, everybody else, oh, sure, that's great. But, like. That's awesome. I like that. There's a little bit of, you know, a little bit of primal fear there. Maybe Mako's going to foot sweep me through that gate. I don't know. But I liked it because, you know, you can go on all these shows you want, do all these podcasts you want, but, like, the laws of physics apply to you. And real. <laughs> when you are face-to-face. You know, like, if you ask those guys some questions and you piss them off, they're going to let you know. Yeah. You know I mean, they're going to let you know. And I, I, I've always enjoyed that aspect of it. If um you know being held accountable for them and if something you know that's you know when we get blocked or whatever somebody has something negative to say i'm fully aware that that's a possibility you know like i like people you know if somebody blocks me like well yeah i made a meme about the guy i wouldn't like us either or or, or we make a satire headline about somebody it's like yeah you're gonna make people mad you know and there's twitter trolls that'll say stuff to you and it's like it's part of the game yeah i mean it's it's the internet dude internet what do you want i mean best thing is you know if people hate you you're doing something right i guess i don't know yeah you can have everybody love you that's just how it is it's just you know nobody bats a thousand right no nobody bats a thousand um what do you think you can divulge for me as far as future projects that you can share um so i will like to plug uh we have this interview coming up with this steroid dealer this guy sold steroids in the late 90s and early 2000s and we have like a full production, like this thing is going to be shot like 60 minutes. Actually, the guy we were interviewing sat down and he's like, is this 60 minutes? And then he stood up and he showed his microphone and he goes, I want to go on record and say this is the first time I've ever worn a wire. <laughs> like he had a, you know, a whatever. And he's, like, this guy, he's the real deal. And uh, his name's Joey the Needle. It's a documentary that we're dropping in the next um, soon, I guess. I'll just say soon. Is it so wrestling? Just- Joey the Needle, was he a wrestling person? 
he was not. He was a coach. Um, he was an MMA coach for a guy who did wrestle and was um, in the UFC. So that's kind of that connection there. So it's a, it's, it's a combat sport deal, at least. It's MMA. Yeah. Based. yeah. So we want to do a bunch of content like that, like different documentaries um, that are entertaining. We'll do like funny ones as well. And, uh, you know, just continue to branch out for our content. Like content for me is number one. Anything that's going to be entertaining to the wrestling community, that's what we want to do. Good. I have to maybe send you. Uh, uh, one of my coworkers did the Lego thing to my hair. Yeah. Cut my hair, and, and I'm, you know, I probably need to buzz out there to you and have you. Yeah. Up, and it's pretty bad, dude. I got yeah. the, I got the, it's covering my ears. You're all right. I mean, whatever. My wife's super ashamed and not attracted to this hairstyle at all. She's <laughs> not happy with it. She's very ashamed of it. Yeah. You got to get a haircut. But I cut my boy's hair out back here this summer on the porch. And I, I think it was the hottest day of the year. I, I'm glad I found the hottest day of the year to cut my kid's hair. My one kid's hair is real thick. Yeah. But Zach, I did not do a very good job. It's still the same haircut they have. It was just yeah. A, it's, a buzz. Now my buddy, um, uh, Nick Namath, the guy I wrestled with in college, he's Dolph Ziggler in the WWE. Yeah. He just got a, uh, what do you call it? He's doing a partnership with uh, Manscaped. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I just got this Manscaped thing. I'll tell you if it's any good. and Yeah. I'll proceed from there if I'm going to go with the Manscaped Clippers. I saw an advertisement for him the other day. Um it's waterproof it's wireless i don't know it sounds like a uh yeah. heads and not just like the for the 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 depth of what do they call the quarter inch eighth inch not that like you can change yeah. the, you can change the actual blades right right so you might, you might have to go with a manscape and do this but how many do you do a day how many uh hair how okay. many appointments do you have a day um i mean that really varies on how many uh haircuts I have compared to like haircuts and beard trans because we do beard trans as well. Do you do the wax? Nope. Nope. No wax. This traditional barbershop stuff. Got the hot towels. Hot towels. That's another thing like uh, there's the barbering stuff because I've had people, you know, ask if I've ever done podcasts or radio stuff. It's like not really, but when I have somebody sit in my chair, I got to talk to them, you know? And so it's similar, you know, I'm asking them, how's their day? What are they doing? So it's almost like an interview every 30 minutes for, you know, how many, how many people you have a day. And so I kind of relate it, relate it to that when I'm doing like a interview with an athlete or somebody that's on Twitter or whatever. What would this cost me to get this busted up to get this? Uh, our haircuts are 30. So it'd be 30 bucks. Dude, you're, you're not playing. No, it's a real deal. Real deal. Yeah. You give me, would you give me a straight razor here? Yeah, why not? How much what more would the straight razor be? Um, I would have to look. It would. It's probably like I think it's like haircut and a shave is like fifty total. Dang, dude, you'd have me looking. I'd look like a million bucks. I do got a face made for radio, which I'm all right with. Hey, that'd be uh, good. Good content video. Maybe, maybe I'll have to come out there and do that. We'll have to. But you can. I don't know if you can transform this face made for radio. Uh, <laughs> anything but that. Um. Oh, did you go to college or anything? Did you go into college? Like, how did you get into being a barber? Did you go to college? Uh, so I went to college for one year. I went to Iowa State. My whole goal with college was get into college. And so I got in and I was like, what the heck do I do now? So I went to Iowa State for one year. I was there during the KJ era. I almost started wearing a paper bag over my head at the end of that. And I dropped out because every day I was sitting in class like, I don't want to be here. What could I be doing? And uh, actually, Mikey England, my cousin, wrestled at Mizzou. His sister was a beautician. And I remember I went home one weekend to uh, have one of those conversations with your parents like, I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, she had just bought a salon that she had been working at. And I jokingly said, I'll drop out of Iowa state and cut hair with you. I'll go to barber school. And then I, that literally that Monday, like I said, when I do something, I, I commit. And that Monday I like signed up for barber school and I was still enrolled at Iowa state. So what was your major going to be at Iowa state? Um, so it's funny advertising. So I actually like 
I, it's kind of crazy because I, uh, I wanted to make like funny commercials, like, you know, like Mountain Dew was doing like funny commercials and like, uh, Red Bull was doing really cool stuff with advertising. And so I wanted to make funny videos, but for commercials, I thought like I could make commercials fun to watch, I guess. And mm -hmm. I just didn't like, once you started getting into it, you had four years of school, then you had, um, then you had, uh, internships and then you had like an entry level job. I did not want to be there for that long. I was like, just let me get straight to it. And I had a professor that actually, he told, he helped start like Nickelodeon and TNT and a bunch of these big networks and was there in the beginning. And he straight up told us when we we're sitting in class, he goes, listen, if you guys want to, you know, make these funny commercials or do whatever you want to do, don't worry about what your grade is in this class or your whatever. He goes, just go home and start doing it. So that night, or that weekend or week or whatever, immediately I went home to uh, where I was living at, at Ames and I bootlegged the Adobe suite, like video editing software and stuff like that. And I just started making videos and I started making stupid videos. Like I would, uh, you know, videotape myself making a grilled cheese sandwich and I would put like funny stuff to it like I'm doing now. And I've always liked doing that. When I was in high school, I actually used to try to make, uh, you know, the show Jackass. Yeah. So I would, me and my friends would go around my small town that I'm from, like 5,000 people. And uh, we would make like Jackass videos where I'd be like, hey, my name's Zach Bogle and I'm going to freaking jump off this roof or whatever we would do. So we would do funny stuff like that, like from way back in the day, just like, just idiot stuff. And so I've, I've like always kind of learned how to edit throughout the years. And that's kind of how I, you know, I've been doing that forever. <laughs> what is your shirt right now? Is it a Mizzou shirt? Yeah, Missouri. Can't see it. M-I-Z. Didn't Mikey transfer from Iowa State to Mizzou? Yeah, yep. So his, like, junior year, I think it was. So he wrestled in his retro year, and then freshman sophomore, and then he transferred to Mizzou and did his last two years down there with Coach Smith. is a legend. Okay. So, and then – you're from the same area as like Willie Miklas is from the same area as you. Yeah. So where I live now, Willie's, um, that's where Willie went to high school. So like Willie, Corey Clark. Um, where do you live Clark, now? Where I live now, which is about two hours where I'm originally from. You're from south of where you're, where you live now. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I'm, I'm two hours north. So uh, my family is two hours south. How far are you from Ames? 40 minutes. I go to every Iowa State uh, duel. Are you, you, a fan. You, are, you, are you a big Cyclone fan? Huge Cyclone. I'm, not, I'm, I'm biased. You are? I like that. That's a, I like that. I like that. Oh, is that, yeah, is that I don't, this? You can't see it because my light's off back there, but it's a Cyclone. I uh, want to come and like rip the Cubs side down and beat you with it, but I <laughs> right. don't know. Hey, I was the Cubs bat boy uh, one time. Are you like serious? Fun fact, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Where at? Like in Chicago? No, at spring training. No way. I was standing, uh, I was there before the game started and I was trying to get autographs from anybody. And um, I was 18. I was trying to get anybody's autograph and I like turned around to try to find, see where my dad was sitting. And there was a Cubs like personnel guy like standing there with his arms crossed like this. And uh, he pointed at me and I like looked around like, who are you pointing to? And he, and he, said so, you know i looked at him again and he goes you so i said okay so i, I walk up there because he was in like baseball pants and like a cubs like uh thermal and i was like you know i walked up there and he's like do you want he's like how old are you and for some reason i still have no idea why i did this i lied and i was like i'm 16 because i think i thought in my mind i think that he like wanted me to dress up as the hot dog uniform and like run laps in the outfield or whatever and uh, i thought maybe he would want like a kid to do that so i was, i just lied and it's like 16 but i was 18 and he's like well do you want to be the cubs bat boy today i was like yeah and he goes well is, is your mom and dad here and i said my dad's right there and my dad's like yeah go do it and yeah <laughs> it's crazy what year was that oh this was like the year before they started like getting good like madden came the following year so it was like right before that uh Rizzo was there. I talked to Rizzo. Javi Baez was there, but nobody knew who Baez was. The only one person that was there that people knew was like Alfonso Soriano, which is like my favorite Cub of all time. He's like the reason I'm a Cubs fan. And then uh, Rizzo. But other than that, I mean, like uh, David DeJesus was there. Were you in Florida or Arizona? Arizona. It was in uh, Mesa, I believe. That is awesome, dude. That's a great story. Did yeah. you just do that one game? 
one game. Yeah, it was the fastest game of my life. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, the first bat I actually grabbed, I grabbed a handful of pine tar, and it was terrible. And so I was wearing a Cubs jersey that day that was blank. I think that's why they picked me because I was already wearing a Cubs jersey without a name or anything. And I grabbed the bat, and I had a handful of pine tar, and I just it wasn't thinking. I wiped it on my white Cubs jersey. And so I still have that jersey. It's got a brown stain on it because of the pine tar. Never getting rid of it, though. No, nah, I don't know. That is awesome. Yeah. I hate the Cubs, but that's a great story. How about your payroll was like 10 times ours and we still must be in the World Series? It's crazy. Are you, who are you? The Indians? Man, are you joking? A who? A tr- oh, my God. Hold on. Hold on. Jesus. Steve Wahoo? It's all I do, dude. You should know that. Yeah. Kind of like my trademark a little bit. Yeah. That's your profile wahoo. picture, right? Huh? That's your profile picture, right? Don't you have any Indians? I always on? have a Wahoo hat on. That's why. Yeah. Like every you- picture. Continue to wear that. Look at this. Look at yeah. this. Zach, you got to help me out here, dude. I'm going to have to buzz out there or something. If they change the logo, are you going to change with them? Or are you gonna... this, is, this is gone two years ago. Oh, it is. Yeah, two years ago they got rid of it. So they're actually talking about changing the name to like the Spiders or the Rocks. or. Are you a Mud Hens fan? I was a Mud Hens. I grew up a Mud Hens fan. I grew up a Detroit fan. And then I went to Kent State, you know, when I was 19. and everything's northeast ohio and i've been in northeast ohio ever since actually mm. i went back for a year and i taught at this high school lakota high school mm. and then because that's like they're in the the same league as genoa okay um but i taught there for a year and then it, that I, world series was tough because i actually uh i was like an indians fan until i was a cubs fan and then um when i was in little league i became a cubs fan i loved alfonso soriano and but before that like all my pictures of me growing up indians gear because my grandpa john is like the you know he died watching an indians game love the tribe dude love him my yeah. wife really loves him she watches every game now i've been to jacobs field a couple times now i think awesome. three times it's a really good field you know, i went to i went to one when uh jim tomey days i went to one of those games did he hit a bomb i don't remember i was a kid i was a, like a baby i love it uh best field in major league baseball you ready yeah. Truth bomb. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh? You think so? Amazing field, dude. Really? What's that? What's it called? Uh, maybe PNC Park? PNC, yeah. Sounds right. I don't know. It's amazing. You Did walk you go- across the Roberto Clemente Bridge. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I think it's the Allegheny River that's in the back there. That, that you would hit, like a guy hit a bomb into the Allegheny last night. And we were watching it. A guy jumped in and got the ball. Wow. My favorite is, uh, well, Wrigley, but Wrigley's so expensive. We go to a bunch of Royals games because it's not That's expensive. That's a cool stadium. It's actually really cool, yeah. yeah they just redid it a few years ago. That's like a really cool stadium. Actually, we just had our, our rookie pitcher just shut them out last night. I went to um, Yankee Stadium. That's my favorite game I've ever been to. Old or new? Um, new. It was the year, actually, you're going to hate this, actually. The year that you guys were, like, the number one team, like, two years ago, three years ago. You guys were beating the Yankees, like, yeah. what, 3-1 or something? Yeah, the 22-game win streak, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, that we're, year, that year. I went, to, so the year, the game that I went to was, um, you guys were up 3-1, you were, gonna, you were getting ready to end the series, and they won, right? It was a playoff game. And the Yankees won. So then I turned to my buddy. I was like, hey, we're going to be here tomorrow night. Do you want to go tomorrow? So we went to the second game. The Yankees won again. I think tied it up. And then it was, it was over for you guys. I was at those two games. But the Tribe were just small market. It's small market baseball. Yeah. You know I, mean? it's I got a special heart for the Indians, so I'm not a hater. Oh, yeah, I'm a big, huge Tribe fan. We're about 35 minutes from the stadium. Like we can be at Progressive Field in 35 minutes park. Yeah. I was actually at the uh, Indians game when um, Alex Rodriguez was getting ready to hit his, like, 300th career hit or home run. Oh, home run is what it was. And uh, it was – it was he didn't hit it at Jacobs Field. He, he, the, he hit it, like, the next game in, like, Toronto. But I remember at Jacobs Field, every swing that Alex Rodriguez hit, it was just cameras, you know, flashing. It was That's crazy. Cool, isn't it? Baseball, yeah. awesome. It's, like, still awesome. Yeah. Don't care, really, for the NBA. Um. 
it's just so yeah like it's really hard to watch any of this playoffs right now for me personally yeah um i just don't care about it um but i'm a browns fan so the nba hasn't mattered since 2016 to me <laughs> yeah did you go to the parade have you ever been to a parade i have not been to the parade but i've been to like been to a bunch of Cavs games obviously ncas was at um Cavs game and then the last concert i went to was uh lumineers at at the queue got the queue yeah i actually, i think uh god to i think the queue madison square garden was my favorite venue because it's madison square garden but mm-hmm. actually just the building and facilities i like the queue the best that's a good facility definitely loved it i love um, the queue I went to uh, a Dave Chappelle show this summer. Nice. In the middle of a field in Ohio. Is that the one that it was his special? Uh, eight minutes, 46 seconds. No, it was at that place though. What's he doing out there? He lives somewhere out there, right? He lives in a farm out there. What, what, t- is it a small town? Yellow Springs. Yeah. How many people live in that town? Oh, uh, Yellow Springs is, if it's three or 4,000 people, I'd be surprised. No way. What's he? Is he from there? Why? Why does he live his there? Dad taught at that college, Antioch College. His dad was a professor there, and he went to like middle school there. And so he just wanted to get away, and he lives yeah, there. Yeah, he wanted to get away, and that's where he. You did. know, people that live there know him or anything like that. Uh like, uh, if you know the Moors, you know the Moore brothers from Virginia Tech, well, Oklahoma now. Uh huh. They're Graham guys. Brent Moore, Mitch Moore. Okay. okay. You don't know those guys? No. One no, dude my- transferred from Virginia Tech. Their mom's, their mom's law firm works with Dave. Is represents Dave. I, that's about you know what I mean. That's like yeah. And then there's okay. like a kayak company in Urbana. They all showed up, showed up after one of those shows the day after. Wow. Like, it was like Dave Chappelle, Donnell, uh, Donnell Rawlings. Oh, Rawlings, yeah, yeah. Dude, he did a set at the show I went to. It was like the best set. And then um. Common was there. Imagine that. Oh, I went to was Common, Erica Baidu, Quest Love. Uh, they were at this show that you went to this summer? Showed up out of nowhere. Yeah, we're in a field. It was me and 200 other people and them. That's crazy. It was wild. People aren't, people aren't able to see any live shows, and you saw that in the middle of nowhere, Ohio. Dude, a guy that owns all these bars down in Kent went a couple weeks ago. And his show was... Uh, Bill, what's it? Bill Barr. Bill Burr. Bill. It was Bill Burr. Wow. Kevin Hart. No way. Is this being advertised? What? No, and he doesn't. No, there's no promotion or advertising. How did you find out about this? Uh, it came across my uh, House of Blues in downtown Cleveland. Yeah. The thing came across an advertisement came across my Instagram. I would literally Dave Chappelle tomorrow, and I was like, "That's it, that's how one of my was? college teammates lives down there." Yeah, I was like, and I hit it, and I, all the tickets sold out in like two minutes. No way! I hit one, bought two tickets. Dude, the tickets were like ninety bucks. You don't even need a ticket to go in. <laughs> you could go to this. There's a there's a cow farm and a and a and a Christmas tree farm. Yeah, go to the one of those. Park your car there and just walk right in. <laughs> like no, no, no one would know the difference. I trust me. Yeah. It blew my mind. It blew my mind. I was like, we didn't even need tickets for this. That's just, I couldn't believe it. Like, I was like, why, why did I even buy a ticket for this? I would fly there tomorrow if, if I had that opportunity. And, they, and they're just like pop-up shows. Right. The one we were at, had no, uh, there was no booths. Hmm. And Dave Chappelle didn't even know. He's like, <laughs> man, you guys are tight tonight. You're real tight. What's going on? Somebody yelled out. There's like, there's no booze here. <laughs> Can we get these people some liquor? And then yeah. he, whatever. Ours turned into like a rap concert. Oh, Tiffany Haddish, she was there. Jeez, this is like the freaking. She was at, she did a set. Um, Mo, Mo did a set. Okay. What's Mo's name? Mo, he has his own Netflix. Mo is, I don't know. Mo's was good though. Mo's was good. Tiffany Haddish was really good. Um, who else? Talib Tol- 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 Kualib. Yeah, Talib Kualib. Yeah. He was there. Wow. Um, That's nuts. It turned into like this like crazy rap concert for like an hour and 20 minutes. That's nuts. And it's like 
it was comedy and then it turned into like rap concert and it was like my buddy he's like a metal head he's like yeah i don't care about this you're ready to go <laughs> so the show we thought it was just going to be dave Chappelle doing like a 10 or 15 minute set and then like i'll see you later mm-hmm. it was a five hour show that's nuts yeah, yeah you guys hit the freaking jackpot yeah and then um you had to wear a mask i got a Chappelle mask wow and you had to socially distance and all the chairs it was yeah Oh, you could get there as first come, first serve. You could sit wherever you want. Huh. General admission. Yeah, it was really cool, man. Oh, we walked backstage too, accidentally. <laughs> we walked into the we walked right up to the backstage. I have a video on my uh Instagram of me walking backstage somehow. And then they were like, Whoa, whoa, you guys can't be here. Is this like a venue? Yeah, kinda. Of. It's like a woods. It's like a field. And that's like a it's like I could do it on my property right out back here. I could like replicate it easy. Okay, I could cut some trees down and we could do it right in my backyard. Wow. I don't want to, but it's not anything where there's like a ton of infrastructure or anything. You have a bunch of acres where you live? Yeah, I got five acres. I mowed the lawn today and it took, I had to double mow it because it was, I had to do the, because I had to mulch it. Um, yeah. It took like two hours. So yeah. Wow. But yeah, we're, we're getting the job done. Zach. Do you have anything yeah. else for me? Is there anything else you got for me before we cut out here? I don't think so. Check us out, man. I like what you're doing. I want to have you on. I'm in. Sign I me up. You, and I think I should have Joe Flo on. I don't know if he can go by that anymore. But, Call him uh, Joe Bro. Call him Joe Bro. Joe Bro. Uh, Joe, I'd like to have Joe Bro. Joe, Joe, Joe Bro. Bro. G-R-O. Bro. Yeah. Okay. Joe Bro. I like Joe to go on. I, I want to squash that beef with him that we had. <laughs> he felt so bad about it. No, I, I talked to him today. And, and I ever, dude. He told me about it. Yeah. it like I, he didn't even realize he did it. It was like me today. Yeah. And I were talking on the phone, and you're like, are you FaceTiming me? It was yeah. like that. I thought you wanted to FaceTime. I was like eating. I was eating a famous Oh, no, I was like out doing stuff. I was out like moving wood around and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But um, no, I literally think that's what happened. Like it hit his his skin. <laughs> And that's what these phones do. If it hits your skin, yeah, that's all that happened to me because I put it like face down in the. You know, he's in Kansas City. That's only three hours from me. Yeah, go check him out, man. He's the man. You'll love working with Joe. Yeah, go he, he introduced out. himself to me before you had introduced him to me. Uh, he had introduced himself to me, and um, he had he had said his name like I wouldn't know who he was. Well, why was why should I assume that people know who we are? Why should we know that? Why should we? Why should we assume he, that? He's Joe, William, he's Joe Williamson. We got to know who he is. But well, he's, an, he's a regular guy. I'm a regular guy. We're just regular people. Yeah. Well, I'm an outsider. I'm regular an outsider. People, I don't, I don't regular people with a young Ishmael haircut. <laughs> I like it. That's what my brothers say, at least. But all right, stick around a little bit. I'll talk to you a little bit after here. Yep. Um, and if we forget anything, we can do part two. If you're follow, us, follow us at Stalemate Show um at stalemate show all, all one word and, and um instagram and twitter instagram and twitter and uh we're gonna have a facebook page soon okay oh i got another i got another content idea i want to put on here i want to have um ah, never mind never mind sorry okay you can tell me off camera here i'll tell you off camera yeah. tell me off camera and uh that's that the thing. Fair? People get me on these things, and I just, I just keep, I can't stop. And the next thing I'm like, oh, I told everybody everything. No. Zach from Stalemates, check him out at Stalemates, right? It's at Stalemates. At Stalemates Show. At Stalemates Show. YouTube uh, is just Stalemates. Subscribe to the YouTube yes. subscribe button. Yep. All right. Thanks for the time tonight, Zach. Stick around, all right? Yep.